Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dustin Apple and I love talking about bow fishing gear, tips, tricks, and all the how-tos that you need to shoot more fish to keep you on the water. So don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, and share the video if you like what you're seeing here today. Today, we're talking about driving lights, okay? Now, you can see I'm not holding an LED light bar because honestly, I don't have one. Um, LED light bars are for running in the woods, Okay, running your ATV, running your pickup truck, or you know, maybe you got it on your Yee Yee truck and you're using the JC Penny's parking lot with that ass dragon. Okay, that's what LED light bars are meant for. When you put them out on the water, something else happens. Okay, light begins to reflect off the water, it gets absorbed by all the trees. If you're going down a narrow waterway, you've got all that ambient light going off side to side and it takes away from your ability to focus downrange. And since LEDs don't work with a reflector and they don't allow that light to be focused, that light doesn't travel near as far. What I prefer to run on my boats, and I have for like seven or eight years, with the exception of trying some LED cubes that didn't work either, um, I run an HID. Now, if this reminds you of the popular 80s KC lights, okay, that was an incandescent bulb sold with a high-end reflector and housing. That's how KC um, sold their technology for years. The bulb wasn't that big a deal. It's a standard bulb, but they were able to make a high-end reflector and high-end housing to go along with it. Since halogens are an ambient light, that reflector really works. But if you guys are buying LED lights, um, with the exception of brands like Lightforce that turn that LED around and they point it back at the reflector, then the reflector is useless. I see a lot of light bars and reflectors and things with that LED sitting flat all the way in the back of the light with that reflector around it. Well, folks, LEDs are flat. All the light comes off that panel and it goes straight out. Very, very little light goes around that reflector, gets bounced off of it and goes out. That's why you end up with a Euro beam. And that's why they market it as a Euro, a Euro beam. With an HID light, it's highly more efficient than a halogen but it also has a high-end reflector, okay? It's ambient, like a halogen, so that reflector works very well. It allows that light to be focused, okay? So instead of me trying to, to focus here and then have all this light go all the way around me, the majority of the light is focused down to a small beam and faced out front where it's more of an asset to me. Now, and an HID, you can get multiple levels, okay? This being a seven inch, okay? See, about almost the size of my face. It's a pretty good size. They make a nine inch, which is getting pretty big, okay? And I think they even make a bigger one. But the majority of us as boaters are gonna run four inch or these big, bigger seven inch, okay? Now, the driver is right back here. You can take this apart, you can look at the driver and things of that nature, but when you're buying a driver, on the small end, it's gonna be 35 watts. But if you look, you can find 55 watts, 75 watts, and in some cases, even 100 watts. But we all know how buying stuff from China is. Even though it says it's 100 watts, it may not be. So I'm kind of leery on that myself. Um, I think these were bought as a 55 watt HID. These are gonna be really, really exceptional. Um, we're gonna mount them, you can mount them side by side, or you can mount them all the way at the corners and kind of tow them in just barely. The idea and what I personally prefer on my boat, I'll do it here in the yard and then kind of fine tune them out on the water. But I like both of them either facing straight together if I've got them wide or if I got them, um, mounted close, then I like to split them out just a little bit. But my ideal situation has to have both those lights out there 
really close together at say two or three hundred yards and have one high and one low, kind of like this. And what that does for me is, depending on my trim angle of the boat, if I'm riding kind of slow, that light that's lower is still at the water's edge, okay? Or if I, you know, yeah, had it backwards. If I'm, if, if I'm up on pad, okay, and I'm running level, that light that's kind of high is right above the water. And that's what I want. That light that's kind of low, it'll be on the water, but it'll be closer to me just a little bit. So that kind of gives you a perspective on how to mount your lights, but also if you can put them in a light bar or blocked from you as a driver, okay, you, you don't want these mounted, say, on top of a console or on top of your airboat cage or something like that because there is still a little bit of ambient light that comes off of these. And anything out in front of the light is going to get blown out, okay? And that's all you're going to be able to see. Everything's going to be really bright. And you're not going to be able to see out there in front of you. Now, we all know the catch-22 of running lights on your boat in the dark, okay? The federal law states that you're not supposed to have lights protruding forward on your boat while running on pad. I'll take my ticket when I get it, okay? My law says that I want to be as safe as possible and run my equipment as good as I designed it to run, okay? That's my law. And if a piece of safety device is going to get me a ticket or thrown in jail, that's fine. I'll still be alive. I don't care. Use your lights on your boat with common sense. If there's a boat coming at you, steer the nose of your boat slightly away from them. They'll be able to tell the difference, okay? If you're in a situation to where you're kind of wide open area and you know that you're safe to meet that boat, go ahead and turn them lights off. Just flip the switch, okay? And then keep driving. Hopefully you still got your red and greens on. If you're in a river situation and you're meeting a barge most barge captains don't mind, okay? But if you're the barge and you're coming at me and the wide spot of the river is to the left side, I'm gonna take the nose of my boat, I'm gonna point it off to the left side, and I'm gonna continue until I get over here almost flush with the captain's house on that barge, and then I'm gonna turn back. If it's a long, long section, Say I meet a barge on a straight stretch and he's upwards of a mile away. I'm going to continue to run on the side of the river that I've already chosen, but I'm gonna turn my lights off. I'm gonna use the reflection of his red and greens and my navigation system to be able to see on the water. And if I second guess that situation or I want you know, to check, I reach down and turn the lights off for just a second and then turn them right back off. I want that barge captain to know that I know what I'm doing. I'm trying to be safe, but I'm also trying to be respectful as another boat captain. If you run your lights like that, you'll never have a problem. I've been stopped by CEOs. I've seen PD. I've, you know, everybody has seen me run my lights in the dark. And thus far, after being a boat captain for however many years, okay, over a couple decades, um, I've never had an issue. I've been running big lights like that on the river for over a decade for sure, um, and I've personally never had an issue. Now, that being said, I have come upon rookie river boat captains that as soon as they see me coming, whether I'm running big lights or not, will turn their billion watt, you know, HID that's on the top of their uh, captain's house and put it right on my boat. Generally, what that means is that boat captain wants you to stop. For safety sense or whatever, that means that they want you to stop, okay? Um, if you can tell the difference, 
Sometimes they'll take it off of you, put it right back on you. Take it off of you, put it right back on you. They possibly want you to stop. So proceed with caution. If it looks like it's going to be a tight situation or if you can see danger, stop by all means. Let that rear boat captain take care of what he needs to. If you come around a corner and you see a rear boat with his light on, because generally once they see your light, they turn theirs on. All right. If you see him bring a light on you, throw it up in the air and then take it off to the side, watch that because that riverboat captain is telling you, operator, I want you to take your boat to my port side. He'll put it on you again, raise it up and put it over. At that point, you as an operator need to take your vessel, operate it off to that left side, okay? Turn your lights off. When it is apparent that your lights aren't going to be at that captain's house, you can turn it back on and proceed safely. These are basic tips on how to run your boat on the river and how to understand what barge captains are going through and what they want you to do so you both can run a river safely and effectively. I hope this helps. If you guys stuck around this long and you enjoyed the conversation, I hope you guys are safe when you're out on the water and hope you never have a problem with law enforcement, but I hope you always take that added precaution to be safe while you're on the river. Be safe, hit the sub before you leave, and we'll see you next time.